Hey guys, welcome to the 311 Griffin YouTube channel. I am uh, flying DCS again just because I wanted to. Um, I'm in a Spitfire going up against the P-47. I have unlimited ammo because I'm just goofing around. Um, also, I'm really just talking about the F-4 delay again because I'm seeing a lot more hate on the internet. Some good stuff too, but I'm seeing a lot of hate where people are just angry about it. And, and you can be disappointed. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can be angry. I get it. But, like, some of the stuff people are saying is really kind of baffling to me. And I, I think people don't really understand how production and development work. Um, like, whether you're producing airplane, uh, airplanes, machines, cars, guns, software, they're all a little bit different. But they're also somewhat the same you basically produce stuff you communicate with your customers only so much as you want to generate hype you don't communicate with your customers just because you love them you're really just trying to communicate hype uh, or, or to generate hype and uh, and you try to hit your benchmarks the best you can hit your hit your dates and your um, you really don't communicate stuff until you think you can hit it and then stuff happens sometimes it really it, it just happens sometimes so um, if it happens and you uh, you can't hit a date, you, then you communicate so that people kind of know and you just do the best you can to, to manage that expectation and that hype. Okay, nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything at all. Also, in the development and production process, oh, he's slowing down. Well, we weren't lined up on that. Um, in the production and development process, you are basically working on producing things that you think your customers will like. You know that not all of your customers will like it, but you think most of your customers will like it and it will advance your pro product into the future. Um, so like if you don't like heat blur UI, like that's okay. Heat Blur seems to think, and Eagle Dynamics seems to think, that a lot of people will like it. And I honestly think a lot of people will. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But um, Heat Blur did it because they thought most of their customers would like it. That's why they did it. And the fact that it delayed, it, like, that's, they're, they're already testing. Heat Blur already does QA. So it's not like they didn't do QA. Some people seem to think that they just didn't test it in-house. Of course they tested it in-house. No software developer just goes like, yeah, send it. You know, that's not the way that works. Um, even my company, and God, the G's are ridiculous in this. What? Uh, that just doesn't seem right. <laughs> Let's do it again. Um, golly. I barely pulled on the stick. I know I was going pretty fast, but I barely pulled on the stick and my wings just fell off. Ugh. Um, I, and I know, like, I can't really talk while I play a game very easily, so I apologize that my thoughts are kind of mixed up here. But, but very seriously, um, Heat Blur developed some stuff that they thought their customers wanted. They hit some delays that they didn't foresee. They're being pretty transparent about it. Um... And, and again, they, they don't owe you anything. They're just trying to generate uh, generate and manage hype and expectations and also take care of their customers the best they can. Um, I think they're doing that. So if you're upset that they're making heat blur UI, sorry. Like we all have stuff that gets made and, and re resources get poured into parts of this sim that we're not really happy about. Like I don't like the early access system. I hate it. I think it's dumb. I think they'd be better off not to do early access but a lot of people like it, so I just have to deal with it. That's the way capitalism and profits work. Um, some of the modules, I would wish they'd make different modules in some cases. Um, but there are a lot of people who like modules that I don't necessarily like, and I just have to deal with it. That's the way that works. When things get delayed, which pretty much happens with every module. I mean, it's coming into early access anyway. When this thing gets released, it's not going to be feature complete. Uh, anyway, so when it gets released into early access, like almost everything gets delayed. So you're just going to have to deal with it um, and, and be ready for it. So the people that are really incensed about this, I get being disappointed. But if you are incensed about this, if you're just like super upset and you're wanting a refund, 
Um, like, I don't get that. And the main thing I want to say to those people who are upset about the delay and want their money back is that what you're incentivizing is less communication. So if you're getting really pissed off that heat blur didn't uh, like didn't meet their 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 promise date, um, and you're really upset about this communication, what you're doing is you're giving them reason not to communicate. Because uh, what developers and manufacturing companies wind up doing is they're like, well, we we thought we could hit this date. We told everybody we could hit this date, and then we couldn't hit this date. Um, so, you know, what do, what do we do to make that, to keep our customers from getting angry and hating us and demanding refunds? What do we do? Okay, well, next time, we're, we're just going to be super, super sure we can hit that date before we tell them. And so then you don't get communications. You might still get some production updates here and there, but you're not going to get, like, as frequent and as um, detailed updates because they can't because you're getting pissed every time they don't don't hit not not even a promise they'll just say like we think we can do this we're hoping to release in first quarter of 2024 or whatever the whatever the thing is and then if they don't if they don't hit it or they miss it by two weeks everybody's pissed off and yelling at them they just don't talk uh, that's the natural reaction so what you're doing is you're incentivizing developers like heat blur to just clam up and so then when they clam up, you're going to be pissed off that they're not telling you anything. And you're going to be like, come on, where's the updates? Where's the updates? And they're going to be like, well, screw you. I'm not giving you an update because last time I gave you an update, you got all pissed off because I missed it by, you know, a month or whatever. Uh, so be careful. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful how you behave and how you interact with these developers because, again, they don't owe you anything and you don't owe them anything. If you give them money, it's because you chose to give them money. If they give you an update, it's because they thought it was the best thing for them, not for you. They don't care. I mean, they do care about you, but they're not in it just to make you feel all warm and fuzzy about what they're doing, okay? So so just keep that in mind. And, uh, and let's try to incentivize our uh, developers to be groundbreaking developers and to, um, to just you know, try to push really good updates and try to communicate well, um, you know, and whenever they communicate something and then they don't quite hit it, just have a little grace. It's not that hard um, to have a little grace and to just to just give them a little space to develop. Because uh, quite honestly, I want them being groundbreaking, um, you know, good developers. I want them communicating and I want them to uh, to feel like they can communicate with us. And if they have an egregious like woo if they have an egregious miss where they're just like oh uh sorry we're not doing it at all or like it's not going to happen we we thought we were going to have it out this quarter but it's not even going to happen this year it's it's going to be a, a whole other year before we're done with this thing like stuff like that i can kind of understand being upset or if they're like blatantly lying about stuff and it's a it's a habit it's not that they just made a best guess and then didn't hit it uh, a good faith estimate and then they missed it it's that they're saying things that are just not true and they know better that kind of stuff i get but like this isn't what's happening with heat blur so uh chill chill because you're gonna make it bad for the rest of us you're gonna make it where they just don't talk at all and that's not what you want and that's not what we want okay so uh, I'm gonna shut up about that and just fight. I think I've made my point. I'd like to go into more detail, but like honestly, I'm just sort of worn out over the deal. Um, honestly, the, like those are my thoughts. And again, I'll say it: uh, if you're demanding refunds, like that, I think that's just problematic. You can do it. They're they're giving it as an option, and you can buy it again later. But like you you jumped into early access, and and they delayed it by like a month or maybe two months, like chill like if you don't if you don't like that don't get early access don't don't buy into early access you know Woo! man he is he is good at getting me slow he's gonna get me to crash into the ocean here uh okay that's it i'm really shutting up about it and i'm just gonna keep fighting now i might i might keep talking while i fight 
but uh, I'll, I'm going to try to stop talking about that. I want to be happier. Also, um, not that anybody cares, but uh, <laughs> I'm kind of excited and also kind of stressed. My wife and I just bought a new house um, that is is going to potentially allow me to have like a dedicated room for my work and my uh, video making and stuff like that. We'll see how it works out. Um, but we've we've lived in our house for 17 years. And it, we've had it paid off for several. We paid it off really quick. Um, it's a little bit smaller than what we want, uh, inside and out. And so we're just gonna we're we're moving and we're gonna expand a little bit. But uh, I'm going in debt again, so that's not fun. But it, anyway, it's kind of exciting. I'm excited about it. I get to build a shop. Well, we think we'll get to build a shop. It's in the early stages. It just happened today, actually. Yeah, and jugs are tough. <laughs> also, uh, planes in, in uh, DCS are a lot tougher than in IL-2 unless you're flying them and you pull, like, one too many Gs, I guess. So, But I do like DCS a lot. DCS is so beautiful, fun to fly. I haven't been in it a, a bit. I've been super busy lately. So, uh, anyway, golly. Oh, man, he couldn't quite do it. So we win that one. Uh, we're gliding much more than I meant to and then we're gonna get way too slow and we're gonna bounce it right off the ground and we're gonna crumple the gear yep there's the stall there's the bounce oh oh it was gross and here comes the roll oh yeah we crumpled that oh we didn't crumple the gear okay one fun thing about the Spitfire though is you can't uh, end DCS yeah there we go we'll drag some wings and we'll do a ground loop. That was gross. Oh, we're still doing a ground loop. I guess this, the wheel got stuck. We can pull those flaps up now. <laughs> but like every time I tap the brakes in the Spitfire, unless I'm super slow, it, uh, it nose dives. So anyway, I've never landed this thing correctly. And uh, this is the least damaged landing I've ever done in the Spitfire and DCS. So yeah, that tail wheel got stuck. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yep, that's it. Thanks for watching you guys. Take care.